So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can detect a user's online status, like their network connection, and we'll also see how we can listen for events for changes to that network connection so you can display to the user or indicate to them whether they're online or offline. So let's take a look at how you would do that using the Navigator object. So we'll first take a look at this special property on the Navigator object and see how you can use it to determine whether the user is online or not. And then you'll see how we can use this to update some simple content on our web page or app. So for example, we've got this online status here that we're going to be updating, but we'll come on to that in just a second. So the property on the Navigator object is actually just called online and it's actually got the L in there uppercase. So we have to say on and then uppercase L for line. So the actual full path for the property is window.navigator.online. But because we're in the console here and the global object is window, we don't actually need that. But if you want to include this somewhere in your code where the window isn't the global object, then you'd need to use this prefix. So as you can see at the moment, the value for online is actually true. And that's because I've got an active working network connection. But in the Chrome DevTools here, if I actually go to the network tab, and what we have here is the ability to actually set our network status so I can actually change it to a different preset and even just set myself to offline. So if I just set offline there, so you can see if I refresh the page, you can see I lose the connection even to my local server. So in the console, if I check the online property again, you can see that it's now coming back as false as the browser is now registering me as being offline. So if we want to actually directly check if the user is online or not, we can use this property on the navigator object. But if we want to actually check when the user is losing or regaining their internet connection, we need to set some event listeners up to listen for the change event. And there are actually two events we need to listen for, and they are the online and offline events. So for example, on the window, we can add an event listener for the online event, and we could do something simple, just logging out to the console that the user is now online again. And we can set up an event listener for the offline event as well. So if we say window add event listener dot offline, and we'll do a similar thing again. We'll just log out to the console that the user is now offline. So say user is offline. And then if we go to our network tab again, let's just open up the console in there too. When we change our network status to online, you can see we get the message in the console saying the user is now online. And if we were to change that back to offline, you can see we get the message saying that the user has gone offline. So simply by listening to these two events, we can actually detect whether the user is online or offline and make some changes to the user interface or perhaps change the way the app's going to behave. So let's have a quick demo of that and actually update that online status that we had on the page earlier to indicate to the user what their status actually is. First of all, let's just set our status back to online and then we'll refresh the page. So what I've actually got in the elements for our particular pages, I've just got two divs, one with the text of online and the other with the text of offline. And I've just have a small amount of CSS just to style them differently. And the hidden class will actually set the display property to none. So if I actually remove that at the moment, you can see there's our offline status, but let's just put that back for a moment. So what I'm going to do is just set up our event listeners for the online and offline events again, and then just toggle this hidden class depending on what status the user is actually in. Let's go back to the console and add that in there. So window.addEventListener, and we're going to say for online. So first of all, we want to select the online element, or at least the element that has the online text inside it. So that has a class of online. And then all we're going to do with that element is just make sure that the hidden class isn't applied. So we're going to say for its class list, remove the hidden class. So that will just ensure that the green online div element will actually display when the online event is fired. So we can do the same thing for the other div element that we have. So query selector offline. And again, it's class list. We'll just add the hidden class. So this is the event that will get fired when the status of the user goes online. So let's do the same thing, but for offline. And it's just basically a repeat of the same function. But this time, instead of displaying the online div, we're going to actually hide that. And then for the offline div, we're just going to remove that hidden class, which should make that red div with the offline text display when the user is offline. So there we go, we've got our two events set up. Let's test that out in our network tab. So let's set ourselves to be offline. So you can see there the offline div is showing and the green online div has been hidden. So let's go back online. Now we can see the online div is reappearing. So let's try that one more time. Let's go offline. 
And then if we choose a different preset, so for example, we've got a slow 3G connection, we're still online, so the status has been updated, although we might not have the greatest connection speed. So there is a way to actually find out more information about the quality of the user's connection. So if we go back over to the console, again, on the navigator object, there is a property called connection. And this property is another object that has some more information about the user's network connection. And you can see it gives you a bit more information about the user's connection quality, and in particular, the downlink which is supposed to indicate in megabits the download speed of the user's connection. So if you wanted to do some further digging into how fast the user's connection actually is, you can inspect the connection property and then look at some of the other information inside there. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've seen how you can use the navigator.online property to check whether the user is online or offline. You can see how you can actually listen for changes by registering event listeners for the online and offline events. And also this navigator.connection object will give you additional information if you need to know more about the user's connection.